Hello there, many thanks for joining us on this edition of Business Week, the program that brings you top business stories that made the headlines during the course of this week, including special news features, interviews, market data, and much more. Welcome to the show. Well, here's the highlight of some of the biggest stories we tracked for you over the course of this week. Now, on the local front, President Mohammed Buhari says the federal government, in its quest to control climate change, has activated a $19 billion fund which will be used for land restoration, tree planting development of climate resilience infrastructure and investment in small and medium-sized farms. Global financial institution JP Morgan has removed Nigeria from its list of emerging market sovereign recommendations over the nation's fiscal woes. And according to reports by OPEC, Nigeria failed to meet its oil production quota for the month of January, February and March this year. And now shift in focus to the international front, Bitcoin fell to its lowest level since January on Monday as slumping equity markets continue to hurt cryptocurrencies which are currently trading in line with so-called riskier assets like tech stocks. And in the auto space now, Tesla sent out a shipment of 4,767 cars from its Shanghai plant earlier within the week for Slovenia, the first batch of exports since the factory reopened on April the 19th and another 4,100 on Friday. Now, nominations for Russian gas transit via Ukraine at the Sokranovka entry point midweek fell to zero. That's according to data from Ukraine's gas pipeline operator following Kiev's warning of shutting down supplies through the route. Well, it's now time to bring your packages prepared by our correspondents. Despite the volatile operating environment and moderated capital flows, as reflected in the subdue capital market activities. Central Securities Clearing System PLC, Nigeria's leading central security depository firm, recorded an impressive revenue growth of 39.2% in 2021. According to the company's annual report and financial statements for the past year, CSCS revenue grew from core operations and ancillary services to 6.4 billion naira from 4.6 billion naira recorded in 2020, registering almost quadruple earnings from ancillary services from 526 million naira in 2020 financial year to 2.2 billion naira in 2021 financial year, with a 3.7 billion naira dividend paid to its stakeholders. Commenting on this outstanding performance at the 28th Annual General Meeting of the company, the chairman of CSCS, Mr. Oscar Onyema, attributed the stellar results to the adoption of technology and diversification of its services. We've done a lot of work in terms of our document uh, digitization business and document retention business. And that business is growing rapidly. And so that is reflected in the numbers uh, that you see. We're still uh, hoping to bring a lot more innovation uh, in the coming years as part of our strategic intent. Speaking on the outlook of the business, the Chief Executive Officer of CSCS PLC, Mr. Aruna Jalowaziri, has this to say. Based on our strategy, we're going to focus on customer service, build on the core, making it more efficient, and we have to keep looking at the bottom line, and we're going to expand massively in terms of our new products and services to you know, create a sustainable revenue for the company. And of course, what is also very important is partnerships that we're going to have across globally or locally to ensure that we keep uh, driving that core that we have and building the efficiencies on that core. We are in business because of uh, one person, and that is the customers. And uh, what we try to do is to see how we can continue to create values for the shareholders. And in the last 25 years, is within the market, uh, capital market space, all we've been doing is actually to see how we can continue to innovate and we can continue to add significant values to uh, customers. Anyone that goes through the other, other reports will know that uh, it's a good result indeed. Because there is an increase in all the uh, figures for the uh, profit uh, for the year, the uh, asset and uh, all other, other things. For more than two decades, CSCS has continuously partnered with all the stakeholders in redefining structures and operations of the Nigerian capital market, leveraging new technologies in extracting efficiencies across the transaction life cycle while providing assurance in post-trade execution.
Retired staff of the Federal Inland Revenue Service meeting with its top management on welfare issues. The retirees acknowledge support so far received from the service, but will want it to do more. They particularly seek help in areas of medical welfare and engagement of their services in capacity building for existing staff. Some of us are retired, but not tired. <laughs> So we 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 like the service to also look at it as a as a reservoir of knowledge, whereby some of them can also be taken out for some matter of work. We also need the management to assist us in terms of medical facilities to our aging members. The chairman of the FIRS assures them that their demands will be taken before the board for consideration. On the issue of medical allowance to retirees across board, these are critical policy issues. We we'll look at them at the management level and, where necessary, make appropriate uh, proposals available to the board for consideration and approval. The retirees are also told their wealth of taxation experience is relevant and possibilities of engaging them for staff training in specialized areas will be looked into. We are currently working with the career and skill department uh, to ensure that we come up with a criteria through which we are able to bring some of you back on board to be part of our technical sessions on a weekly basis to be part of our training and maybe our uh, capacity building program. Beyond seeking after their own welfare interest, the retirees also want their children given employment in the service. And now let's take a look at a feature on the show today as we take a look at the state of Nigeria's aviation sector. The price hike of Jet A1 fuel planned and also suspended uh, grounding of flight operations and now the current talks between airline operators of Nigeria and then government stakeholders. We'll definitely bring you much more details after this break. Thank you very much for still staying with us. Let's now deal with the crux of today's matter. Now, the head of Nigeria's state oil firm and the central bank governor, Godwin Imefele, have told the National Assembly and the country's airlines that they are unable to help with the soaring jet A1 fuel prices. However, in a resolution to the meeting, the Nigeria National Petroleum Co Company Limited agreed to supply jet fuel to marketers nominated by the airline operators of Nigeria. Well, joining me now for more on this, I have Tayo Jury, Managing Partner, Aglo Aviation Support Services Limited. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, back in the month of March, we saw the peak of disruption of flights, delays and even cancellations due to the scarcity of aviation fuel. And now at the start of this week, we had airlines talking tough in terms of grounding operations to a halt. Then later on, we also heard the announcement of a suspension of this plan. The contentious issue here is the 700 Naira price peg of Jet A1 fuel. This reality for airlines is a push to the wall and a break in beyond the pressure points. What are your thoughts on this latest uh, development and talks that led to the suspension of the grounding of uh, operations? Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, but it ha we have to actually retreat the fact that this is not just a peculiar issue to Nigeria. As we speak, we have shortage of aviation fuel in South Africa. There's a global hike price, a hike in price for aviation, uh, jet A1 aviation fuel across the world, globally. We've actually seen in the US at the moment, it's not been, this is the first time in 14 years, it's going to uh, uh, about so much, the highest peak in 14 years. So it's not something particular to Nigeria. But what makes Nigeria uh, uh, situation very peculiar is the fact that it actually had that extra astronomical uh, increase, like you rightly said, from 190 Naira to 700 Naira. But this is actually a very clear due to the fact that the marketers have to source foreign exchange to go and buy the uh, Jet A1. And then with that, they have to come and sell it back. 
and they're open to the volatility in the pricing and purchase of jet A um, forex. So by it's at the price they buy, based logistics and every cost, they actually layer that on. And by the time it actually gets to the airline, the cost is actually high. So the fact is, it's going to be the same and there's no solution to it, unfortunately. It's going to see the price hike. However, what can be done is actually having this hedge, hedging the uh, fixed price over a certain time with the marketers, being able to actually come together for the airlines, being able to come together, see what how many times they are flying, the volume of their cap, uh, of the operations, their flight operations, and actually pick few marketers and hedge the price. It might not it will be definitely be lower than five seven hundred, but that gives them a, a guaranteed price over a time frame, and that helps their operation and stabilize their uh, financials. And now, aviation fuel really covers about 30 to 40 percent of operational costs for domestic and foreign airlines. And according to some reports here in the country, this is also risen to about 50 to 60 percent. The trouble here is that there's no magic one that can be waived uh, to crash the price of Jet A1 fuel. But to what extent now do you think a government can intervene to sustainably bring down this price range here in the country? Uh, you've just answered the question, David, and it's the what would actually impact the price significantly is the cost of export going to buy because of the cost of importing. Again, if it was being produced as uh, refined hair, we would, the price would not be as high because there would not be some other ancillary charges that we're actually facing now. So it's not up to government. Well, government should provide an enabling environment for the refineries or those that are interested in the refining of Jet A1 business to set up that capacity within Nigeria, within West Africa. So especially within Nigeria, because we have the volume here and with that, we're able to actually uh, reduce the price. Having said that, uh, we, we've if fast forward what has happened in the last few days. We've seen an NMPC guarantee uh, uh, guarantee the price at 480 to airlines to pick whatever uh, uh, whatever marketers they want to uh, partner with. But this sincerely is not sustainable. It's it actually has every smell of subsidy. And how much of this can government subsidize? Government, in my opinion, should be focused on healthcare, infrastructure, security, and education, and then uh, aviation. And all these opportunity, uh, others, uh, other businesses should be able to wiggle to the business, uh, the commercial uh, vagrancies of, of businesses. And with this commercial uh, uh, partnership, what should happen is they actually have to grow their corporate governance. They actually have to grow technical partnerships and actually grow the uh, companies so that they actually have foreign technical or foreign. Uh, investment input into their companies, which makes them stronger and able to withstand this uh, winter and caprices in, the, uh, in this uh, economic shock. And we've also had many reactions pour in over the license issuance that permits airline operators to now import their own Jet A1 fuel. Importing your own fuel is not necessarily a primary duty of airline operators, but we also know there are some uh, players on the international front that import their own like United Airlines. Do you think this is a step in the right direction, putting airlines more in the seat of control? It's good you mentioned United. Way back 12 years ago, Delta actually went into the business of buying a refining, refinery. They actually, they eventually sold that business about two, three years ago. Why? Because that is not their core business. So my opinion is that the airlines should focus on their core business. Now, what has worked over time is time-tested model, model of actually uh, partnering with the marketers or the fuel suppliers of hedging this. And with the hedge, the fuel supplier knows they have the funds in, the, uh, in their fund, in their account, and they're able to do business over a certain time. This actually gives a fixed amount and a fixed, uh, fixed operational rate for the airline as well, rather than the yo-yo that we're experiencing at the moment. So it's better that the airlines face their core business of flying 
rather than uh, going into uh, importing and refining of oil, because in my opinion, that is actually, they, that's not going to last. And I do not think with the numbers and all the indicators, the Nigerian airlines do not have the capacity to actually continue going into the refining business. We're still struggling with uh, paying a lot of the leases and uh, all, all the foreign exchange uh, part of the uh, airline operation. Now, add, now layer that and add the uh, the importation and refining of fuel into that. That's actually going to make lots of airlines go on that. And another contentious issue we have to deal with here is the fears that there are imminent uh, ticket price hikes lurking in the background, which is rife. If airlines want to stay afloat, some of these burdens they currently carry have to be transferred to customers, hence a further surge in ticket and price. Do you think air travelers in the country are ready for another increase in terms of airfares, especially at a time where air travel remains the safest means of transport due to the state of insecurity in the country? Yes, I do. It's not a sentiment, David. It's actually the reality. And the reality is when there was that increase, which you did mention, from 30 to 50, base fare of uh, 50,000 naira, the, the passenger numbers dropped. It's talking about data. Data talks, says that it, uh, numbers don't lie, like they say. So we've seen numbers dropped. And now what picked up again was right after that, we had the issue with the Kaduna the rail between Abuja and Kaduna. And that insecurity, which you rightly mentioned, made people come back to uh, flying again. But the fact is, aviation is a function of disposable income. Let us look at the numbers. The numbers tell us that, uh, yes, GDP has at last quarter, uh, the third and fourth quarter of 2021 increased, but we're going to see a decline in GDP and a decline in an increase in inflation higher than 13.3 percent in first and second quarter because of a lot of foreign exchange the geopolitical uh, uh russia uh ukraine war so that's going to affect uh di disposable income people are not going to be able to fly so what they're they going to do rather than uh, even trying to fly at all they look for other options there's the virtual platforms there the uh, you can actually send whatever you need to send and they actually re actually adapt the thing about human nature is resilience being able to adapt to situations so what people start finding other alternate ways of conducting their business rather than flying because you have to understand that even the big companies that travel and fly uh, within nigeria they actually have a budget that has been fixed and with that budget that budget is fixed i was fixed in january it's a January to December uh, budget timeline. Now, with that increase, it's affected a lot of their budget and the bottom line. So you're going to receive reduction in the passenger traffic. So what we're going to see, even there's a limit over, lastly, there's a limit to which uh, we can actually uh, increase the uh, price fare, the, the price tag for the traveling, because it's the elasticity of price There's a, uh, for the price ticket. Lagos to Abuja, there's a limit. You can actually not price or outprice yourself out of, of the market. It does be a limit to which you can price it and you will not get passengers. So we don't want to get to that um, to the verge of that limit. So I don't see that there'll be an increase now. And that's why the airlines are actually shouting to actually get a solution prior to, because they see that another increase would not be in their best interest. And now what other cost cutting measures do you also see airlines adopting now just to stay afloat because we have recovery being threatened from the domestic to the global front now. The market is heavily dollarized for scarcity still persists. Some believe all marketers are exploiting airline operators among other uh, contextual entry cases. Do you think airlines have any chance at cutting down uh, the operational costs? Uh, for us in aviation, safety is paramount, and I don't think that's actually what uh, takes a big chunk of our operational cost, which is uh, your maintenance, which is dollarized, which you rightly uh, highlighted and asserted. Uh, so what we need to do is, it's uh, again, we've seen this happen over and over again. It's called a cycle, and we've seen this cycle. It's not just Nigeria. What, we've, what would help 
the uh, domestic airlines be able to sustain and withstand and uh, although this system this challenge is the fact that one the corporate governance has to change the ownership structure has, has to actually be uh, 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 amended because you find out most of our airlines are owned by uh, they are personally owned by families or by one person so you find out that when there's a structure and their ownership, it opens up this uh, technical partnership and strategic partnership to foreign investors. And with that opportunity, even if it's at a lower 40% to 60%, 60% being Nigerian because there's a uh, there's a regulation to keep the, uh, your uh, your ownership as a Nigerian airline, you have to have majority shares. With that, you're actually able to, that partnership opens you to actually in foreign inflow, which actually balances your uh, your expenditure and opens you to other investments, which will be able to soothe this kind of um, storms, these headwinds, and um, would able to help uh, domestic airlines survive. Because the truth is, it's the reality of aviation, and we have to face it. Hmm. Okay, now, so do you think there are any shocks that are lurking in the background, especially as we are having some resolutions being reached now? Do you think there's any twist of fate that will throw the aviation sector off balance, irrespective of the little progress we have here in terms of talks between government stakeholders and then the airline operators? Um, they fixed it at, like you said, they fixed the price at 480 for three months. So uh, at 480 for three months, three months goes by so fast, David. So what we need to see is at 480 for three months, will they survive? It's going to push us into summer. Into summer, and we have lots of movement. So yes, they will survive. Thereafter, are they able to actually in survive and actually uh, sustain whatever the price will be after three months? That's a challenge. So yes, there's a, there's a buffer at this time, but the fact is what would happen thereafter? So what we should be thinking is not just thinking about what is happening now, is to forward looking and say, with the buffer, after the buffer, life after the buffer, which is reality, how can we now, how can the airlines sustain their operations thereafter? And wrapping up our conversation now, let's have your thoughts on the new ultra-modern terminal at the Murutola Mohammed International Airport. This is a little bit of a shift, but which, according to some sentiment, has failed to draw a foreign airline's patronage. This is somewhat linked to its apron space uh, constraint for operating airplanes to park. What didn't you say? Well, it's not my choice. It's the it's reality, and we actually put the cat before the horse. Unfortunately, we didn't plan that properly, and we're now living with it, whereby uh, we we have to ex expand the apron and the other side for, it's not, you're saying foreign airlines, because of the type and the fleet of the aircraft that they use, that aircraft is not able to maneuver and have enough uh, maneuvering space on the ramp to use the new terminal. So that's a challenge. And so they have stopped with using the old terminal, which has a lot of uh, challenges like the heat, uh, air conditioning system, the baggage handling system, uh, the passenger facilit facilitation challenges. So what should happen is, uh, the good thing is they've started using it, uh, despite the challenges and you having uh, air piece operate out of there, and we're trying to move uh, the uh, West African Airlines AWA there because they have smaller aircraft. But what would be the long term opportunity to actually use that is to see they've actually uh, tinkered, tinkered with the opportunity of, of breaking down some walls and some uh, buildings around there. When would that be done? How fast would that be done so that we can optimize that, um, optimize that uh, airport terminal? and actually ensure that Nigeria, the passenger has a uh, pleasant uh, travel experience, that would help us a great deal and help towards what we plan or, on paper for Lagos and Nigeria to be the hub of, um, uh, a hub of uh, aviation in West Africa, if not Af if, if, in West Africa, if not Africa. Thank you very much for your time on the show today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and we hope that we have a stronger recovery and some stability within the aviation sector. 
It's always a great pleasure. Please stay safe. Well, just before we go now, here are graphic details of Nigerian gross domestic product report on expenditure and income approach for the third and fourth quarter of the year 2021 as prepared by the National Bureau of Statistics. That's it on this edition of Business Week. Many thanks for watching so far. Do enjoy the rest of your weekend. I'm David Alabi. Bye for now.